Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at simple classification of substances and we are going to be looking at separation of mixtures. Initially we talked about mixtures and the different types of mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures, homogeneous mixtures and we said for the heterogeneous mixtures they, are, they, form, they do not form a uniform layer. For the uh, homogeneous, they form one layer. And we talked about specific methods that are, can be used to separate these two types of mixtures. One of the mixtures we discussed in the previous uh, lesson was use of a magnet. And we said this is a mixture that is heterogeneous, a solid, solid mixture, where one of the components is magnetic in nature. So we were able to separate magnetic compounds from non-magnetic compounds. And today we are still going to discuss on solid solid mixtures that are still heterogeneous in nature, but one of the compounds sublimes. So what is sublimation? So sublimation is a process where a solid changes into vapor directly without forming a liquid. So if you are looking at the changes, physical changes, this substance is changing from solid to gaseous state directly. It's not going to pass through a liquid. Normally, a solid changes to a liquid first and then changes to a gas. But these compounds do not change into liquids and we call them sublimate when they have been deposited. So they undergo a process called sublimation. So when, when we are moving from a solid to gaseous is sublimation. The opposite reaction is called deposition. So if you have a component that is already in solid state or in gaseous state and it is cooling down, when it cools down, it changes from vapor to solid. So that process is what we refer to as deposition. So it gets deposited. So an example of a mixture is the mixture of iodine. Iodine is a common compound that sublimes and sodium chloride, which is the table salt. So if you mix these two together, this is the experiment we are going to use for this reaction. I want you to notice the apparatus that are being used for the experiment. We have the heat with the wire gaze and the tripod stand. And on top of the stand, we have the beaker containing uh, the mixture. And then we have also a watch glass containing cold water. So what is going to happen is when you eat the mixture, the mixture, the iodine crystals in the mixture, which sublime are the ones that are going to sublime. And then the fumes are going to go up in the beaker because it has changed from solid to liquid. And then when it comes into contact with the cold watch glass, it's going to be deposited. It will change from solid, to, from gaseous to solid very quickly. And you're going to see some purple, a shiny deposit on the cooler part of the watch glass. So that's how the mixture is separated. You can be asked to draw this uh, setup. You can be told to explain the setup. So you should be able to, to do so uh, comfortably. So as we have said, the observations for this experiment, you see a purple vapor going up in the beaker and then some dark gray shiny solid collects on the bottom of the beaker because this is the um, iodine that has been deposited and then a white solid remains the beaker, which is our sodium chloride. So this is possible. As we have discussed, this is possible because iodine sublimes, but sodium chloride does not sublime. So we cannot, we cannot like say that uh, we are able to separate this mixture unless one of the components sublimes. And this is a solid, solid mixture. So what are other solids uh, that can be able to sublime because it's not necessarily for iodine only to be used in your testing or you might not be 
told to use iodine in your experiment only. Other compounds can be used that sublime. So what are some of these components or compounds that can sublime? So some of the compounds that can sub sublime is anhydrous ion 3 chloride, and then we have aluminium chloride, we have benzoic acid, and then we have carbon four oxide or dry ice. This dry ice is very common. We are going to discuss it later in carbon and its compounds. But these are other substances that can sublime. Make sure you can be able to remember this because they can be used uh, in place of the iodine in our experiment. Uh, next, you're going to look at one key application of this process, just like we looked at the application of use of a magnet. So for sublimation, one of the application of sublimation is in the dry ice. The dry ice or the carbon dioxide is used as a refrigerant. You're going to see the ice cream vendors that usually moves around with some boxes. Inside those boxes, they have carbon dioxide, which is a dry ice. And the reason why it is very suitable is because, first of all, it sublimes very quickly. The moment it is exposed into the atmosphere, because there is heat in the atmosphere or in the environment, it changes very quickly from, uh, um, from solid to gaseous state. That is one of the reasons why it is really, really liked by the uh, vendors. It also does not turn into a liquid. So it does not cause any wetness on the uh, ice cream, for example, on the dr drinks that are being uh, sold by those vendors. So because of the fact that it just changes directly from, so from uh, solid to gas and it doesn't leave, it doesn't form like a uh, liquid in between, like on in the process, it's very suitable. It's very suitable. And some of this dry ice is also used in some refrigerators. Uh, which are um, which help, of course, with the refrigeration. It also cools. So when you look at at changing of water into ice and carbon dioxide into ice, you can see also carbon dioxide can form ice as well. So this, that is what we have discussed for today. So let's look at one question in regards to the discussion. So the first question is define the term sublimation. So sublimation is a process where a solid changes directly to a gas when heated without forming a liquid. And then the next question is the next question is list five substances that are, that undergo sublimation. So we have iodine, we have anhydrous iron 3 chloride, we have aluminum chloride, we have our dry eyes and benzoic acid. So those are the substances that undergo sublimation. So that's the process of sublimation. I hope you have been able to see how it undergoes. Um, so when it comes to the exam, uh, these uh, components can be mixed, different components together. You can see a mixture where there is a magnetic uh, component, a component that can sublime and a component that is not magnetic and does not sublime. So different ways can come. As you move on with the different separation techniques, you realize you'll be working on questions where we are mixing a lot of different mixtures that require different number of processes for us to be able to get the final product. So it is important to be able to see these uh, processes individually first and understand them individually before we go now into um, mixing uh, different processes. So for the next session, we are going to look at the solid liquid uh, mixture where the solid does not dissolve in the liquid and we are going to use filtration method. So see you in the next lesson.